What's going on, socialites? Welcome back to episode 44, GPS Tracking, your podcast for everything you need to know about the global Pokemon Society Draft League and Pokemon news in general. We got a good one for you this week. Playoffs are heating up, so we're going to take a look at both the majors and the minors playoffs, see where the teams are settling in as that continues. We got an interview with one of the majors coaches, Katie, of the Denver Ninetales. And we got a fun segment with a previous coach, Josh of the Waco Scizors. So if you're a fan of Apex Legends, Battle Royale, and Pokemon, well, here's the crossover that nobody asked for. So stay tuned for that. First up, though, let's take a look at the current playoffs, starting with the minor leagues. Thanks for joining us, Kate, head coach of the Denver Ninetales. How are you feeling now that we're halfway through the playoffs? Hey, Ryan, thank you for having me. I'm feeling pretty good and kind of relieved that the season is over and now we're kind of getting down to the, the important part. Who's going to win the playoffs? I don't know how to take that comment that you're relieved that the season is uh, winding down. It's a lot but of matches. It and is. The season's coming up. We're going back to um, – to singles, and I like singles better, honestly, so. Yeah, so this is actually your third time now out of mm -hmm. four seasons making it to the Elite Four. So do you have any tips or anything that you kind of, you know, has set you up for that sort of success? Um, I think know your team, obviously, but don't be afraid to, to trade Pokemon. I feel like a lot of people are hesitant when it comes. Some people, some teams are really great about making switches as the season goes on, and some teams not so much. I think it's it's important to adapt your team as you go and kind of take a look at who you think or project might go into the finals, and sometimes making trades based off of future matches. Yeah, for sure, that's good uh, stuff to always think about and kind of you know after you play a certain team you might need not need a certain pokemon anymore unless you expect to play them again in the playoffs so you can look to for sure fill other weaknesses etc so speaking of the elite four though you do have that match coming up against anthony and the pittsburgh pulte guys how do you feel going into that match he's the number two seed you're the number three seed both of you were six and two this season mm -hmm. um, i'm a little worried about his 
Urshifu. I know my team sometimes struggles, or every match I had against a fighting type, I've struggled. So I think that that we, you know, I have a game plan, but I think it will give me a run for my money for sure. And uh, as long as I can break through that, I think I'll be okay. Yeah. Uh, not giving anything away, though, how do you feel about his whimsicott and the speed game? Do you feel like you're prepared for that, or Again, is that something that you feel like you might have trouble with? There's a game plan. Um, obviously, I have a few strategies that can play around that. Um, you know, my team is hard because I either need Trick Room to be fast or I need Sand to be fast. So there's a component there that needs to happen to to kind of flesh it out. So we'll see. Without giving too much away, I want to see how the match plays out and uh, see what happens, really. I mean, I think these games can go a lot of different ways, just depending on what we can each get off individually. So. Yeah, for sure. I expect some good games. I think the uh, fans all do as well. Um, would you say that the society is rooting more for you or for Anthony, do you think? Because you've always been a fan favorite, but Anthony's kind of like the new up-and-comer this season. So. On, for anybody who can take you down, to be quite honest. As long as someone takes you down, they'll be happy. <laughs> and I think it would very satisfying to everyone if it was your wife and I would be very satisfied but it hasn't happened yet so <laughs> I haven't been able to beat you in quite a while and I would like to beat you at the championship that'd be nice the trophy would go on my desk that would be quite a sight we'll have to see I'm still waiting for my opponent I don't know who I'm playing yet because their uh, match got delayed but mm -hmm. we will see you know I look forward to Whoever that is, I have to play against. And then if I do make it to the finals, I look forward to playing either you or Anthony. Mm -hmm. um, for sure, it'll be a good match. So congratulations, though, are in order. Uh, your Pokemon Excadrill, who was up for Season 4 MVP nomination, did win in a landslide. Everyone else had one or two votes, and Excadrill got a bunch more than that. So congrats. Mm -hmm on excadrill you said you want an excadrill plushie i want an excadrill um, plushie i don't think I that's will a lot to ask for that. <laughs> you I know i'm i'm good at giving away prizes just not in a timely manner so give me time to uh find and procure and everything but i, I will look into cute. that good for an excadrill plushie but, yeah, uh, I didn't expect Extra Drill to do as much damage as he did this season either. He he definitely dominated, and I pretty I brought him to every single game I played. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Sand, if teams aren't prepared for it, it can definitely just take a lot of stuff down. Um, I do think Anthony will be prepared for it. He's shown mm -hmm. in previous games against Weather that, especially as Whimsicott has certain tricks. So it'll be a interesting battle if, if that's how it goes, but I'm sure it will be a speed game mm -hmm. coming down to it either way. So I'm sure both teams will be prepared for that. So you said that uh, you were looking forward to singles. Any reason in particular going back to singles next season? Um, I just prefer the format a little bit more with singles. I mean, on doubles is very challenging. Um, it, it's it's hard when you're going up a team, and especially with this new format of only having four out of the six, it's been a whole new level of challenging and planning around your matches. So I guess to me, singles is a little bit easier and makes it a little bit more fun. So, I mean, the, the competitive part of doubles is definitely has its own appeal, but singles, I think, is just a little bit more relaxing. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm just letting you letting you talk about that. So yeah, I mean, I I can agree with that. I think both of them are, you know, difficult in their in their own rights. But it's definitely um, positioning is a lot easier in singles, mm -hmm. I would say. So it's easier to make adjustments throughout the game than in doubles. You make the wrong move or adjustment, and then you're way 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 behind, and you probably mm -hmm. lose because of that. But uh, that is why we do best two out of three for doubles and uh, only a one of in singles. So mm -hmm. you kind of have a opportunity to adjust to that in the doubles metagame. So 
I guess uh, before we close out this interview, Katie, I will say we do have a lot of coaches returning to the society and new ones coming next season. Uh, how did you feel of the competition overall this season with the major minor split and the new coaches? And do you feel like, you know, I don't know how to word this properly, but is new blood or returning blood going to be a uh, better for the majors as well how do you feel about the competition level and everything i actually i thought it worked out awesome i think there might have been a rockier start in the beginning while all the new coaches were kind of get their feet under them but like tokyo did fantastic this season and i hope are they coming back next season because they yeah. I, they showed a huge level of improvement and i can just imagine what they'll bring to the table next season and i thought the whole minors league was great to kind of get the base of how to plan your team and how to do strategize for battles for a lot of people and we saw some great up and comers in the minors division that i think will be really great for the majors so i mean even the side ducks had a huge blossoming this season compared to the previous one so i think we saw a lot of growth in our members yeah for sure i i can agree with that with several of the coaches um speaking of the minors uh myself and the uh, future rules committee are looking to expand the uh, role in the minors. I didn't have as much time to put into it as I would have liked. So if you are a current coach for the society and you're interested in joining the rules committee for next season and further to that point, if you're interested in doing more with the minors kind of being like a minors commissioner, uh, definitely let me know if that's something that you would be interested in because I need somebody to be a little more hands-on with that. Yeah, and be as the society grows too, it might not be bad to have a co-commissioner. Uh, no, I'm no one's equal Instagram. to me. You're just a I'm minor I'm with the Instagram account, so I have no time to be a co-commissioner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, uh, let's check out our Instagram account, see when the last time something was posted on there. Weller, I bet you I could get... Let's followers in the next week how many followers i think the last time something was posted was pokemon day which if someone has not checked out that post they should oh you changed the uh thing right it's not pokemon 5s anymore it's pokemon gps i believe no i don't think so because this is pokemon gps and this isn't us <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway well, oh global pokemon society we'll get there folks <laughs> we'll get there should be under your just likes you should be able to pop right up well i used to have it saved under favorites but i had the old url saved okay let's see yeah, th this was on Pokemon Day. Great picture, but that's though. That's gold. That's gold right there. Yeah, four we weeks ago. <laughs> what have you been doing? You had a bye week and everything. Get back on that content train. We'll get back to it, especially with the new season. Fresh start. We get that Instagram going. There you go. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, Katie. Good luck in your match against the Pittsburgh Pulte guys. Anything you want to say to your fans for this season? No, thank you for all your support and watching all the videos and make sure you like and subscribe. Talk to you next time. See you. Hey, socialites. I'm joined by Josh, head coach, the Waco Scissors, and we got a fun segment for you here. As you all know, we can't be playing Pokemon all the time as much as we would love to, right, Josh? We, we have other games that we're interested in. And Josh and I, in particular, put a lot of time into Apex Legends, the Battle Royale, which is available now on basically all consoles. You can even play it on the, the Switch when you're done playing Pokemon, if you, if you so choose. And we were talking and we were thinking like, okay, what if the Apex Legends the characters in the game had their own partner Pokemon to like use in the battles or maybe they're in the Pokemon world. Like we don't know what, we didn't really say which world they're in, Josh. Are they in the Apex world or the Pokemon world? But like who would be their perfect partner? 
And you know, there's some there's some overlap here in Apex Legends. You got to catch them all, all the legends, uh, all the uh, all the loot. You know, it's it's a match made in heaven, really. Yeah, for sure. You're you're hunting down that next big loot, that next legendary item. So, for sure. Unfortunately for the legends, it's kind of a you you got to pay some something or at least grind a lot. So I I, I guess that's kind of like maybe like a raid battle or something. You got to grind through the raid battles to get the legend that you want. So let's hop into this video, Josh, and break these down. First up, we have Bangalore, an offensive legend. Bangalore is most known for her smoke grenade tactical ability. And who better than Magmortar, who evolves from Magmar, one of the original smoke screen users from Gen 1. Magmortar also... Mortars in the name rains down heavy artillery, and that is Bangalore's ultimate sweeping the battlefield with heavy artillery, pushing back her opponents. So it just makes sense, right? Bangalore and Mag Mortar here. Well, she's popping smoke, and Mag Mortar's popping smoke. Next up, we have Bloodhound. Uh, and who better to go along with Bloodhound than Corvus Squire? I mean, look at that raven on Bloodhound's shoulder. Uh, Corvus Squire is going to fly over the battlefield, going to spot opponents, just like Bloodhound's tactical ability. Uh, you know, find those footsteps, you know, right ahead uh, of uh, a Bloodhound as well. Just just like the little ravens that fly away when Bloodhound's running around. And of course, when Bloodhound uses their ultimate ability, um, you're going to get Corvus Squire to turn into Corvin Knight. Corvin Knight's going to fly around and get you even more info. No wonder Bloodhound moves around the battlefield so fast when you have that ultimate ability going. Um, Corvus, Corvin Knight known for its traveling abilities. Uh, so Corvin Knight, Corvus Squire, Bloodhounds, OP. Next up, we got Gibraltar, who's best known for his dome ability as well as his gun shield. So we had to look at a defensive dome-like Pokemon. Hey, we got the Turtle Blastoise. Gibraltar's pretty basic as well, as far as legends go. So he gets one of the starter Pokemon. Blastoise also has those cannons in the G-Max form, gets G-Max Cannonade, which goes nice with Gibraltar's ultimate, which is a tactical barrage. So you got a nice mix of defense and offense. Next, Lifeline. Lifeline is known for her support, her reviving teammates, her throwing out her healing drone. And what better Pokemon to go with this than Blissey? Chansey was always that nurse in the Pokemon centers in the anime. Blissey is the next step up, even more uh, of a healer than than, than Chansey is. Um, I would love to get soft boiled uh, by uh, by some Blissey drones, right? Um, and that goes just along with Lifeline's uh, Lifeline's powerful abilities. Exactly. Next up, we have. A lot of people's favorite legend, Pathfinder. And Josh, you and I went back and forth a lot trying to find the perfect partner Pokemon here for Pathfinder. And we settled with Ferrothorn for a few reasons. One, the steel type, of course, mirroring Pathfinder being a Marvin, a robot, very fitting. And two, the way that Ferrothorn moves around is it uses its giant spiky vine-like appendages to swing along the tops of caves just as Pathfinder uses his grappling hook to swing around the battlefield. So we figured that would be a very good uh, comparison there for their movement. I know I wouldn't want to punch either one. Uh, Wraith is up next and Wraith and Greninja pair made in heaven. Look at that, the similar poses here. Um, Wraith known for her portals. She's zipping around the battlefield, rescuing her teammates and just hiding when there's some danger. Uh, Greninja is going to steer clear of, of enemies. Stealth as well, right? Uh, Greninja also, we know from, from Pokemon media like Detective Pikachu and even Smash Super Smash Bros. Um, Greninja likes to kind of flit around the battlefield as well. Yes, next up we got the man with the plan, Caustic, and his deadly poisonous gas. Who better to pair with Caustic than Weezing? Josh, imagine... Costas's ultimate, he just takes a wheezing, throws the Pokeball, and poof, just poisonous gas everywhere where the wheezing lands. I think that would be great. Maybe his tactical would now be little coughings he places around. That would be that would be pretty funny. Um, now, Mirage, the resident bamboozler of the Outlands, uh, what better bamboozling Pokemon than Zoroark? You run into a wild battle. It is a Pikachu, and then actually, whoa, it's a Zoroark, right? You can hear Mirage in the background saying, you've been bamboozled. <laughs> um, 
Uh, Mirage sends out his decoys, uh, tricking enemies into shooting nothing, right? Uh, Zoroark uh, would be a really good Pokemon for, for Mirage, I think. Next up, we got Octane. And of course, Octane's all about the need for speed. So we knew we needed a speed boost Pokemon. And Ninjask is just perfect. Look at his face. He's got the goggle-like eyes. He's got the face mask. Just perfect. Ninjask can move faster than the eye can see. And sometimes when I'm chasing down Octane, I feel like he's moving the same way. <laughs> That's that. I feel that too. And the flying is kind of like the bouncing and the double jump with Octane. Yeah. Um, all right. Watson, the, the engineer of Apex Legends, she created the 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 ring, right? The the ring that you have to get into the zone, and that's why we have Magnazone here um, as another electric uh, engineering type Pokemon. Um, first of all, they would be really great. Instead of throwing out her pylon, she can throw out a Magnazone. He can do the same thing. Look at that little tower on his head. Uh, electric attacks. Uh, that's her static electricity. Um, I feel like uh, Magnazone, they would be really, she, she could, he could power all of her barriers for her. For sure, for sure. And next we got the hacking legend Crypto with his little drone hack. Now Crypto might need a buff, Josh, in Apex Legends. And what's a better buff than a Rotom taking over hack and flying around shooting electricity out? That'd be crazy. So we gave Crypto a Rotom, the Pokemon known for taking over electronics. What more could a master hacker want than a Pokemon like that? And you know, in Sword and Shield, there's already Rotom flying around in little drones, so it works. Um, Revenant and Runarigus, they're they're Matt, they're really well together for for a number of reasons. First of all, Revenant holds grudges uh, for all the people that have wronged him in his life uh, or many lives. Runarigus is the grudge Pokemon. Um, Runarigus has this ability, Wandering Spirit, that, that that cancels opposing Pokemon's abilities. Revenant's tactical ability, canceling uh, opposing Legends abilities, and then they're connected through their their loss of their past life uh, in the form of Yamask, uh, and Revenant's kind of re. Exactly. Next, we got the greatest thief in the Outlands, Loba. And what does a thief need but a trusty Thievil? Thievil's the only Pokemon in Sword and Shield that learns the move Thief through level up. So it's a natural thief. You see that little mask. It also has a tail that sweeps away its footprints as it goes. That could be an interesting buff to counter Bloodhound if Loba could sweep away her footprints with her Thievil. Rampart and Mr. Mime, imagine this. You are running across the battlefield. Suddenly a turret springs out of nowhere and shoots at you, but you can't hit it. That's because Rampart's thrown up her Mr. Mime barrier in front of that turret. Um, just like Rampart's normal ability, her normal tactical ability to throw up those those uh, those barriers, right? Uh, Mr. Mime, known for making barriers. Look at him right there. He's, he's, he's touching one. Uh, he's going to throw those up in front of her way faster than Rampart's barriers could ever go up. She's going to be a bullet hell exactly not breaking through those screens next we got horizon one of the most powerful and versatile legends and she's all about black holes if light can't escape the horizon how can you and the pokemon that she has with her is gardevoir who creates its own black holes which is crazy they need to give gardevoir like a signature move where she does that but i figure these lovely ladies will need more Pokemon because Horizon's so busted, she needs to go back in time to reunite with her son. So she is after the creation trio, Dialga, Master of Time, Palkia, Master of Space, and Giratina, Master of, what is it? The Dark Matter, the Void. And that's all Ooh. about Horizon. She gets the legendaries just because of her power and versatility. I think that's right. I think that's right. She's, she's gonna sweep the battlefield no matter who's on the battlefield. Exactly, for sure. Her her tactical is so great with its movement and her ultimate is amazing. Finally, we have old Fusey, the newest legend. Uh, and Fuse is known for a couple of things, including slinging his grenades. And wouldn't he love to have more, uh, uh, more grenades on hand regularly? Well, Turtonator here uh, is known for being explosive in a number of ways, including having explosive dung. Imagine getting explosive dung thrown at you by Fuse's old metal arm. Uh, in addition, uh, Turtonator is known for being explodey, uh, thanks to uh, thanks to its unstable compounds making up its shell. That fits really well with Fuse's all uh, whole explosion uh, nature. Exactly. So that is all of our legends from Apex with who we think their partner Pokemon would be. If you 
play Apex Legends or if you're familiar with it and you think there might be a different partner Pokemon that would go good with maybe your favorite legend, make sure you comment down below and let us know. And Josh, before we end this segment, we got some big news to announce, right? Yeah, we do. Yes, that's right, folks. For all you Waco Scissor fans, Waco is coming back to the Global Pokemon Society. They are going for the Major League title next season. Let's go, Waco. Comment down below. Let's go, Waco. What What was your old saying, Josh? Was it like Swords Dance Up or something? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, Swords <laughs> Dance like nobody's watching, Scissors. Let's go. 